Hi everybody and welcome to the Learning Kitchen here at Billings Farm and Museum. Today we're prepping recipes for Thanksgiving and I'm going to show you how to process some squash for either roasted squash, but then today also we're going to finish this roasted squash and make a really delicious pumpkin pie. You might be thinking, why aren't we using pumpkin for pumpkin pie? Um, I've picked out two squashes that I prefer to use over pumpkin because I think they have a better flavor, texture, and they really, really cook up nicely for a delicious Thanksgiving pie. Um, so the two squashes I have here are a butternut squash. It's extremely common, got a lovely sweet flavor. Um, you can find them all over. Um, it's really beautiful texture and it purees very nice and smooth once it's all cooked and roasted. And this squash right here is called a Hubbard squash. It's got the bluish hue for the skin. It's a very thick skin um, for a Hubbard squash. And these squashes can range anywhere from five to 15 pounds. Um, so pick the size that you want. Uh, if you're making lots of pies, obviously pick a bigger squash, but the bigger the squash, the more puree you're gonna have. Now, since Hubbard squash has a thick skin, um, it's a little bit more difficult to cut than your butternut squash. So what I like to do is have a very sharp knife and then stick it in the squash like this and then slowly rock the knife a little bit working in small parts all the way down and around the squash so i'm going to cut the squash this way so you have two halves of a ball and then scoop the seeds out i'm going to do the same for the butternut squash and cut straight down this way scoop the seeds out of the the hollow end right here and then i'll show you how to prepare them for the oven so as you can see, I've finished um, cutting my squashes in half, and then I've also scooped out the seeds. Um, the definitely smaller amount of guts and seeds for a butternut as opposed to a Hubbard squash. But you can look at the, the texture of the butternut squash, and it's really a nice close texture, more resembling that of a sweet potato. And if you look at the texture of the Hubbard squash, it's a little bit more grainy and mealy. So I would say for both flavor profile and texture, this is half sweet potato, half pumpkin. So you have that little mealy bit. And because it's so mealy, it's best used pureed in a recipe. So that's why I'm gonna puree it up for our pumpkin pie. Now to prepare our squash for the oven, I roast mine at 350 degrees. And if it were keeping it for a savory application, I would add some salt and pepper. Um, but since we're not, I'm just gonna olive oil. So I'm gonna take a little bit of olive oil here in my bowl and just run it around the flesh of the squash to get it all nice and coated. That'll prevent sticking in the pan um, and also help keep the flesh a little bit moist. And to capture all of the moisture that's in the squash while roasting, I'm gonna take my squash and roast it flesh side down. So the skin is sticking up. So the skin almost acts like a cover over the squash. So the moisture from the squash while it's roasting in the oven will create steam and that'll help soften the flesh of the squash and reduce the cooking time just a little bit. Because the squash is so big, it will probably take an hour, if not two hours to roast a Hubbard squash, closer to an hour for butternut. So I'm gonna olive oil all of these um, squashes, turn them all uh, flesh side down, skin side up, and start roasting and I'll set my timer for an hour and then come back and check. And if not, give it a little bit more time. I would start with 15 minute increments and check every so often. So our squash finished baking a little while ago and I've taken it out and let it set on the counter to cool for one to two hours because it was, it was very hot. But as you can see, um, here's the flesh really nice and soft so you can move it around um, with your finger. Same with the Hubbard squash. It, I mean, it just purees, it almost melts like butter in my hand. But you know your squash is done, I'll flip it over, because the skin will get wrinkly and some of it will start to brown. So there's a little discoloration here. Um, the squash will start to wrinkle and that way you can also um, stick a knife through um, the edge and it'll pierce right through the skin and you can feel how soft the flesh is. You know, Hubbard squash you can pretty much test anywhere, but butternut squash, make sure you put it um, on the stem end, not uh, the bulbous end because there's not much squash to uh, sort through. So I'm gonna take both of my squashes and then using uh, a metal spoon, I'm just gonna sort of carefully scrape the squash out of the skin and then put it in my blender here and um, give it a puree. And when the squash is in here, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of packed brown sugar, three tablespoons of orange juice as the liquid because orange juice gives it a really lovely flavor. 
and then also three tablespoons of some softened butter. So we'll come back after my squash is all pureed. All right, so I have my squash puree all set to go. Um, you might notice it gets a little bit milky in color, but that's just because of the butter. So the squash is a little cold. The butter um, is also just softened. It's not melted, so it has some little white streaks, but that'll really melt into the pie filling really beautifully once we're all finished. So I have my puree. I have three eggs. I think a half a cup of brown sugar with a half a teaspoon each of allspice, ginger, cinnamon, and salt, and then a half a cup of heavy cream. So how we put the pie filling together is I'm gonna give a quick beat to the eggs. Just break the yolks, stir it around, just till they're combined. And then add my brown sugar and spices because the granulation in the brown sugar, or dark brown sugar, I should say, will help break up the eggs. So give that a nice beat around. As you can see, it's coming together beautifully. And then at this point, I will add half of my puree to the mixture. I only add half at a time because I don't want the mixture to get a little bit too thick. And then when you try to add the cream, um, and then it sort of splashes over the side of the bowl sometimes. So just a nice gentle stir with half of the puree. You can see that comes together. And then we'll add half of the cream for a quick stir. and then the rest of the puree. Make sure we get it all out of the container. Now I only pureed the Hubbard squash. I'm saving the butternut squash for my dinner actually, um, but the Hubbard squash is again a really beautiful squash to make a pumpkin pie or a squash pie. And as you can see, it's not really as thick as it would be if you added all of the puree at one time, which is fantastic. So we'll add the rest of our cream. And then give that a whisk around. Now, once it's fully incorporated, I'm gonna pour it into my prepared pie shell um, if you're running out of time or you don't have enough time, you can certainly buy a pie shell from the store, either or use your favorite recipe and then, um, you know, fill your favorite pie tin. Um, but you can get a little creative with your pie dough if you have your grandmother's famous family recipe and you want to use that every Thanksgiving, go for it. Again, if you're short on time, it's okay to use a store-bought crust. But the most important thing for pumpkin pie is to prepare your crust before you put the filling in. So that means crimping the edges and making it look all nice and pretty because if you put the filling in and then you have to crimp the edges of the pie, you're gonna get your thumbs in the filling or the pumpkin pie filling. And then it could get right on the edge where you've crimped and then burn. So it'll cook obviously faster in the oven. So you always wanna crimp your pie first and then pour the filling in. So our filling's ready to go. I'm gonna pour it into my pie shell. Scrape all of it out. See, switch to the spatula. And then my pie is prepared for the oven. I have my oven heated to 350 degrees and it'll probably bake for 30 to 45 minutes, um, but I'll set my timer for 30 minutes to start just to see, um, and then adjust the time in small increments uh, from there. So our pie has just come out of the oven just a little bit ago. I let it cool slightly so it wasn't as hot, but the, um, the pie tin itself is still hot. It's just absolutely beautiful, and it smells so good with the spices and the nice buttery crust. Um, the pie baked at 350 degrees for closer to 45 minutes. Um, it would probably take a little bit less, but my pie tin 
is a little bit deeper, almost like a deep dish pie. So more filling means a, a little bit more of a cooking time. How you can tell when your pie is done is the edges will sort of start to, to puff up and dome up almost like a little souffle, but the middle will still be a little concave. But when there's a nice rise all together and the pie or the pumpkin pie starts doming up, then you're okay. You can also give it the jiggle test. So it's just holding on and then wiggling the pie around. If it jiggles harmoniously like uh, a jello, then you know the pie is set. But if you jiggle the pie and it has like almost like wave ripples as a splash in a pool, then you know the middle's not quite baked yet. So you're really looking for that harmonious jiggle like jello and then your pie is all done. So now that you have your pie, you can serve it to your family and friends for Thanksgiving, um, albeit maybe a little bit small this year. But I always love to do fresh whipped cream on my pumpkin pie that just really brings out the delicious flavor. So I hope you enjoy this recipe.